for Gondor! Our Minas Tirith warrior was prepared first today with some gun metal spray. This was done purely for speed, as he is clad in armour from top to bottom. Today we will apply all the base coat colours first, before moving on to the washers. So a tan flesh was used for the face, and a necromancer cloak was applied onto the cloth of the tunic. A couple thin layers of paint was used here, rather than one thick layer, and this will give you a decent coverage of paint, but also not clog up any of the details in the recesses of the cloth. Be sure to get to the small areas of the underarms at this point too. Black will be used on a lot of this miniature, so we will give him some dark hair and black gloves to start with, as well as painting the back of the legs and his boots. Now you can opt to keep these as just armour and leave them silver, but I went for black, just to make the miniature more interesting once we have finished. Finally, the shield was given a couple thin coats of black also. For those new to painting toy soldiers, using paint straight out of the pot or bottle would normally be too thick. However, using a bit of clean water, we can thin it down slightly and then use this to paint a model. This will stop any details from being lost whilst painting, and we normally coin the phrase of two thin coats. We will move on to the belt and the straps now, and these were painted with some oak brown paint. The sword scabbard was also done at this stage too. The nice thing about applying all of the base coats first is that if we make a mistake, we can easily rectify this by applying the other paints on before we move on to the next stage of using washers. The last little bit I decided to paint was some brass for the sword handle. This was to add further interest to the model, but equally you can leave this silver if you wish. As mentioned earlier, it is easy to tidy up the areas at this stage, and I did this here, as some devious little tan flesh decided to creep onto the edge of the helmet. Now for the fun bit, and this is adding shade paints, or washers, depending on which brand of paints you are using. Different name, but pretty much same function. For our painting beginner friends, these type of paints you can use straight from the bottle, as they are already super thin compared to our acrylic paints. Some mid-brown was added to our belt and straps, whilst flesh wash was used on the face. And then a dark tone was applied to everything else, but leaving out the areas at which we have already painted black. These shade paints work so well by sinking into the recesses of a miniature, and creating darker shades of the paints which have already been applied. You can really see this on the warrior's tunic, and the segments of the armour that he is wearing. It's a quick way of making your miniatures visually appealing in a matter of seconds, and I use washes on pretty much every model that I paint. Now we can start adding some details for our noble warrior. So for the hair, an initial highlight of oak brown was used, and then this was followed up with monster brown. For the latter, this was dotted on as a highlight, so that we can still see both colours. The face was next, and before we paint the details of the eyes, the eye socket was darkened with some mocha skin paint. This was also used to paint a line between the lips on the mouth. A fine tipped detail brush will really be your friend here. That being said, what brushes do you guys currently use for your miniature painting? Let us all know in the comments below. Now, you may not be totally confident by painting the whites of the eyes, but I implore you to at least have a go. If you do go wrong, or you don't like it, then we can just paint the mocha skin back in. The rest of the face was fairly quick to do. A small amount of cobalt skin, which is a lighter colour than our tan flesh, was applied to some highlighted areas, such as the chin and cheeks. This will be more than enough for our troops to go onto the tabletop, but if you would like to add a little bit more, then let's move on to the next step. To make the face more visually interesting, we added some reddish shadow tones into the recesses, especially on the sides of the face and around the nose. This was done by heavily thinning down some red paint with water, to create a similar consistency of our shade paints. And once completely dry, some corpse pale paint was added as a further brighter highlight to some of the areas as our previous skin colour. Overall, this will make the face stand out nicely over the darker silvery armour and the black areas. 
Now we are going to give our black tunic a bit of interest too, and give it some slightly greyish layered tones. By mixing some dungeon grey paint with water, we are going to make this fairly translucent, and you can see this on the palette here. By applying these thin layers to the upper parts of the cloth folds, we can build up the colour as much as we want. The more layers, the more grey it will look. After applying these layers, lines were painted onto the edges of the folds to create a quick highlight. The same thing was done with Filthy Cape afterwards, however this time it was only applied to the lower parts of the cloth. This made it lighter towards the bottom and gave it a blended appearance. Sometimes you may want objects on a miniature to stand out a little bit more when it is next to another material. For example, this belt and the scabbard was given a shadow line of watered down black. This then helps the eye separate it from the armour and the tunic. And once we paint the highlighting colour of leather brown on afterwards, it will contrast with this lighter colour and it will help the eye pick out these details of the miniature from a distance. For the scabbard itself, some extra lines and rough highlights were added to mimic a quick worn leather look. Now for the boots, gloves and back of the legs. We are going to make these look a bit more worn and duller looking compared to our tunic colours. So we will give these a greyish green highlighting tone of dark stone followed up by field grey. For the gloves, I find that dotting on the highlights for the knuckles and fingers is best. It just makes the shape of the hand more refined. Now for that shield detail. We start with a colder tone of blue here first and pick out all of the branches and intricate details. I find that this is a nice base coat for our stone golem which we'll apply afterwards. Now for me I like this, it gives a cooler tone to the detail rather than just painting it white. It is twice the effort, so I would suggest to try this on a single miniature first to see if you'd like this effect. Otherwise just paint it straight stone golem. But I will show you another method later on in this video, just to give you some options. For the shield itself, it's a stronger material compared to our cloth, so we are going to paint some brighter and sharper highlights to portray this. Uniform grey followed by a finer highlight of ash grey were the colours of choice for this. And with that, we have three different ways of painting black today. Our warrior's shield has been very useful in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so we will add some thin lines of our ash grey to represent chips and scuffs when engaged with the enemy. Now onto our main element of the miniature, and that is the metals. After applying a dark tone earlier in the video, the brass handle of the sword was given a sheen of weapon bronze. Now, for our good side warriors, they would look after their armour and keep it polished ready for when they need it. Compare that to our darker evil counterparts of the Moran and Orcs. I doubt they wouldn't care less how grimy their armour would be. So to make our Gondorian armour shiny, we will dilute our paint with some water to thin it down quite a bit. We want the original silver colour to still be present, but we are effectively glazing on a brighter silver on top to bring back some of that shine that the dark tone took away earlier in the video. And much like what we did with the belt and scabbard, some thin down black was added into some areas in between the armour plates to define the shaded areas a little bit more. This technique is pretty useful for anything really, and it just helps the eye define different areas of a model. Finally, the armoured areas were highlighted with some shining silver. This can really be seen on the leg and shoulder armour plates. At this point too, we can carefully embellish the detail on the chest plate armour as well as the helmet. Just try not to get this paint into the darker recesses, otherwise we will have to reline the black. And of course, don't forget to highlight that sword also. So that is one way of painting a Minas Tirith warrior. Now the armour probably took the longest as it is the main part of the miniature itself. But let's say you have just purchased the Battle of Osgiliath box set, or you just want to get through your standard warriors quickly to get them on the table. Then I dedicate this next bit of the video for you my friends. Gunmetal spray again was used as an initial base coat, but this time the whole miniature was washed with dark tone afterwards, 
as we are going for speed here. Once the shape paint is totally dry, a dry brush method was used afterwards with some shining silver. When doing the dry brush technique, we just need a little paint to go onto our flat brush and then take off any excess onto a sponge. I stay away from tissue paper these days as you can get these little bits that can come off and go into your brush. Then simply glide the bristles up and down over the miniature and this will pick out the edges of the armour for us. It's quicker than the highlighting that we did before, but it is not quite as sharp to the eye once completed. A another area we can save time on is the cloth. Again, from our Necromancer Cloak base coat, this time we can build up the colours with a makeup brush. Similar to what we did with the dry brush technique by taking off the excess paint, this time the paint was layered onto the cloth. On the left was Dungeon Grey first, and this was followed up by Filthy Cape on the right. And for some quick shadows, some watered down black paint was added into the recesses. Hopefully you will see the speed in which you can get these warriors done if you need to. For the shield, this time we skipped the wolf grey layer paint and went straight onto the stone golem colour. This off white paint was dry brushed on to bring out the embellished detail of the shield. As this picks out the detail fairly well, you can see that some of this paint does end up on the shield itself. Afterwards, we can apply the watered down black that we used on the tunic earlier and go back in to tidy up the shield areas. You can see how time can be saved by using different techniques. So these are the two warriors that we have painted so far. Which one is your favourite and which method do you think you guys will use? So our mighty warrior has been on the battlefield and shown his qualities whilst defending the white city against those pesky orcs. And we are going to promote him to a captain and give him some extra details. The back of the shield is on show from a warrior that I painted earlier, so we will give it a wood grain effect. Mocha skin was used for a dark brown base coat, and to mimic the different colours of wood, some thick lines were painted on using fur brown and dirt splatter to create a variety of wood colour. Afterwards, the back of the shield was given a wash of mid brown shade paint. For the wood grain itself, some thin lines were painted on with leather brown, tan flesh and matte black. You can do as much or as little as you would like here to get your desired effect. The tunic was screaming out for something to be put on it, so a line was added to go along the bottom edge of the cloth. This was painted on faintly at first to get the correct shape going around the folds of the cloth before a second thicker layer was added over it. And due to the folds in the cloth, this detail would be in the shaded areas and look darker. So some thinned down dirt splatter was painted onto the lines in the recesses. And what sort of captain would we have if they didn't have some bling on them? Of course gold would be used to pick out some areas of the model to embellish those details even further. The tree symbol on the shield, the breastplate, as well as the front of the helmet were all given the gold treatment. Some mocha skin paint was then used to create some shadow lines, just to differentiate the gold detail and the silver of the armour. The highlight for our newly painted detail was bright gold, and this just made it a little bit more shiny looking. This captain is ready to defend our Skiliath valiantly with his troops against the hordes of the Moran and Orcs, and if you want to see how to paint them up, then check out this video right here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.